Welcome back to Ben's Tech Lab. Today I'm going to show you some power supply options for the Cooler Master NR200 case. In my previous build video, I showed using a non modular power supply that I had left over from a previous build that I wasn't using. This has a lot of cables coming out of it, and they're ketchup and mustard colored, uh, which isn't the best, but hey, it gets the job done. If you're just looking to power your PC, this is probably going to do the job just fine for you. But if you're looking to have something a little neater, maybe nicely uh, cable managed, and also maybe quieter, then you might want to consider something a little higher end. I have two power supplies to test with today. The first one is the Corsair SF450. Uh, this is the Platinum version. It's a modular SFX power supply. And then I've also got this Silverstone Nightjar uh, NJ450 SXL. So this is an SFXL power supply option to try in this case. This is also modular. Uh, to compare with motherboard sizes, I've got my Chinese X79 motherboard that I've shown in a previous build video. That's a slightly smaller version of Micro ATX and does fit in this case. But also for those of you that are doing a mini ITX build, I've got a ASRock B550 Phantom Gaming ITX motherboard, which is the official mini ITX form factor that this case was designed for. So let's start by taking out uh, this power supply and see what the differences are here. All right, totally typical power supply here. This one is the Silverstone SST ST45SF. It's a 450 watt power supply. It was included in a previous uh, small form factor Silverstone case that I was using for a a build. It's 80 plus bronze certified, so that's not uh, an amazing standard by any means. Uh, a lot of people are using gold or even platinum, so um, I did find that it was a little bit noisy. Uh, this mess of cables here, I mean, I, you know, I Velcro strapped it. Uh, not bad. Gets the job done. If you're really going for a cheap utilitarian build, then, you know, this is going to power your machine just fine. All right, so first up, we've got the Corsair SF450 power supply. This one comes pretty highly rated by the small form factor building community. Um, this is the platinum version, which does have a silent mode when it's not under full load. So when your uh, computer's sitting idle, the fan should be off so that it's totally, totally quiet. Uh, and then the fan will just kick in when you've got kind of a full workload going on, uh, in which case you probably won't notice it anyways if you're, if you're gaming or listening to music or whatever else is going on. This power supply, I am sticking with the 450 watt range of power supplies in my builds. Um, I don't have any 30 series graphics cards right now. My best graphics card is an uh, RTX 2060, and I've clocked that one uh, on my power meter at never more than 200 watts. I run all of the different scenes in Blender Render, and it will not draw more than 200 watts. So even when coupled with a decent processor like a Ryzen 3600 XT, uh, you're not going to max out the capacity of the 450 watt power supply. So I'm sticking with this one primarily because I want to keep my builds quieter. Uh, they do make a 600 watt version. Cooler Master makes a few 600 and 750 watt versions. So if you need that power, you can look at them. But let's start with this one today. Let's open it up here. Right in the top, product information, manual. The manual is even for SF450, SF600. It's uh, same line of power supply. So if you need that 600 watts, uh, it's going to be basically the same thing in terms of an unboxing. So included in the box here, you've got your power cord, which is nice. You've got a couple of uh, nice little Velcro ties for cable management, that's nice. Uh, what I really like though, well, that's a loud crunchy bag. What I really like though, is that all the cables are sleeved and black, no ketchup and mustard cables here. There's the power supply itself. This is a SFX uh, sized power supply, so it is quite compact. Okay, so there's a little tag on here that says silent operation at low to moderate loads. In this mode, the fan will not spin. I'm sure that tag's necessary just so people don't think the power supply is broken when they uh, unbox it, plug it in and see the fan not spinning. Um, you don't want it to spin if you're not drawing a lot of power. Uh, that keeps it nice and silent, right? All right, so here's a little shot of the side labels in case you're interested in the specs. Looks pretty nice. Here's a little shot of the modular connections. You can see where uh, you'll hook up all the cables for your ATX power, motherboard power, PCI power, and peripherals and SATA power. All right, let's check this one out in an empty uh, Cooler Master NR200. All right, so these Cooler Master cases come with this power supply bracket here, which can be removed from the case for mounting, and it can be positioned either on the back panel of the case or on the front panel of the case. 
in the back panel, there's actually two heights that it can be mounted at. It can be mounted down here, or it can be pushed up ever so slightly, just a little bit to up there, which is supposed to allow for the SFX L power supply additional length to fit while still allowing a full length graphics card. Here is the ASRock B550 uh, Phantom Gaming ITX, which is a nice little motherboard. We can fit that in here. And it, the official ITX size will fit no problem with the power supply mounted on the back panel of this case. That's uh, gonna be a good uh, layout if you're doing, like I said, the radiator on the side of the case. Um, and it will give you the most flexibility in terms of vertical height for the SFX L power supply, which we'll test next. On the other hand, if you're trying to fit a larger motherboard in this case, such as a smaller version of a micro ATX, it can be done. It's not officially uh, part of the spec of the case, but it can be done and people like to do it. Um, when you put it in here on, uh, with the power supply at the back of the case, it is gonna interfere here. So you will have to move this to the front of the case to make a little bit more room in there. Let's mount up this uh, Corsair and see how it looks. All right, with the Corsair SF450, which is an SFX power supply, it is completely concealed within the shroud of this power supply mounting bracket. And there's even a little half inch of space below it to fit the modular cabling there. So here's a sample with the SFX power supply and an ITX length graphics card. Uh, this is of course a shorter length graphics card for small, small form factor builders. Uh, there is quite a bit of bulk of the cables going uh, between the motherboard and the power supply in this configuration. And you could experience some difficulty, particularly if your SATA connectors are right on this edge of the motherboard here. You'll probably only be able to fit a right angle connector, if any at all. Um, but if you're using a NVMe SSD, then you'll probably be fine. Let's see if I can route this uh, motherboard connector behind the uh, motherboard back panel. Uh, on this motherboard in particular, the power connector for the CPU is way up here in the top left corner, which is a little far. I think that's just because of the uh, compactness of the mini ITX design. Normally I'd prefer to see that a little closer over here and you would have more cable length to work with, but let's see what we can do. Well, look at that. So you can fit the uh, motherboard power cable behind here. Let's see if the back panel fits on. And there is enough room for some cables to pass behind the motherboard uh, panel and the case panel. So while I successfully moved the, the um, CPU power cable to go behind the motherboard back plate here, um, I'm not gonna be able to get the ATX power down around here. Maybe with custom cables, you probably could get it down and looped underneath here to clear up more space for your graphics card. That would definitely neaten it up. But with the stock cables, with the Corsair 7 450, I couldn't get it uh, looped up from the motherboard around the back panel to the power supply here. There we go. So there's a mini ITX board with a ITX size graphics card uh, with the wires that are included with the Corsair SF450 power supply. I was able to get the CPU power back around the motherboard backplate and the case still closes just fine. All right, so that's the SFX power supply moved up to the SFX L position. It gives just another half an inch of uh, space between the GPU and the bottom of the power supply bracket. Uh, the cabling is still a little bit bulky in this particular uh, setup right now. So it would be a bit of a challenge to fit a full length graphics card without bending the cables uh, up. Um, obviously you could bring these in a little more up here and you'll fit just fine, but it just won't be quite as pretty, but it'd fit. So first thing I noticed with the power supply on the front of the case is I can no longer reach the CPU power cable behind the motherboard. So I'm probably gonna have to bring that back out to the front here. Because of the extra space available now between the mini ITX motherboard and the case on, the, or the power supply on the front of the case, I find it a lot easier to uh, tidy these up in terms of making room for a full length uh, graphics card down here. I think with a full length graphics card, this might be a little easier to do without requiring cu custom cables. One of the uh, things that I don't understand why Cooler Master did this is there's only one height position for the power supply when mounted to the front of the case. And it seems like it'd be super easy to provide more options. If you look at the front of the case here, 
this is where the power supply bracket is hanging from. And to have two more holes, another half an inch up for an SFXL configuration, uh, seems to me like it would be super easy to do and it wouldn't require, it wouldn't interfere with anything else on this case to be just this much higher. So I don't understand why they didn't do that. And uh, I'm hoping maybe they'll, they'll release a version two of this case that'll allow for the, uh, an SFXL length position um, with the power supply being mounted a little higher on the front of the case. Let's get rid of this Corsair SF450 and let's take a look at this Silverstone NJ450 SXL, uh, which is a longer power supply and see how that fits in this case and also what cables are included with that one. So I bought this power supply for my upcoming Monster Labo, the first PC case uh, build, which is coming soon. That is a completely fanless case that can cool a mid-level CPU and mid-level GPU, totally fanless, and that means totally silent. This power supply also being fanless contributes to the totally silent build. So that's what uh, what I bought this for and where it's going, but I thought, well, I've got it before I do that build, might as well test it out in the Cooler Master NR200 so you can see how it looks. Uh, it's also an SFXL power supply, so it's a little longer and you'll be able to see how well that fits or doesn't fit in the Cooler Master NR200. Let's get this thing open. Same as usual, power supply, manual. Uh, so you get a little box of parts here. And we got all our cables. I have this one shipped from Europe uh, because that's where Monster Labo ships out of. So of course they sent me the European power plug, but uh, but uh, you know I'll have my own. I got lots of these cables all around. Uh, cables included seem to be okay here. Uh, they are not sleeved, but they are all black. I think that's a decent compromise. I like the uh, black color as just kind of a stealth build myself. Um, we'll see how those look when we get them in, in the case here. But there's your bundle of wires. And the power supply itself. Keep that packaging here. It's interesting, it even has the power connector for the uh, the old floppy. If you want a three and a half inch floppy drive in your computer, you can power it off of a Molex connector. That's hilarious. Well, that's definitely a, a, uh, a nice little piece of kit here. Super heavy, like I mentioned before. All aluminum, heat sinking all the way around. Let's take a look at this here. All right, so there's a shot of the back uh, label on the power supply in case you want to see the specs on there. All right, there's a shot of the back of the power supply modular connections. Lots of them have dust caps on here, which is nice if you don't need them all, but you just pop them off there. So you've got a couple of uh, PCIe power cords. You've got uh, power sense, you've got the motherboard power, and then you've got three here for SATA and accessories, and then the uh, motherboard ATX power. So that's quite a, quite a good set of uh, options there. All right, so starting out in the lower position for the SFX power supply, just to show you what your options are. Uh, if you have an ITX length graphics card, then this could still work and give you a little bit of room to play with down here. Um, obviously that's not the original design of the case and people who are uh, putting in an SFXL power supply are probably not going with a fanless one, but rather a higher wattage power supply for a larger full length uh, graphics card. So in that case, you're going to want to move this to the upper position on the back panel, which is like that. This will give you just enough room to squeeze some cabling in down here with a full length graphics card. But uh, let's try it out because I think it's going to be pretty tight. All right, not the most amazing job in the world here, but um, that's a super basic setup for the Silverstone fanless uh, NJ450 SXL here. I do like these cables, even though they're uh, maybe not as nice looking as the Corsair sleeved cables, they are definitely uh, more flexible when it comes to the bottom of the power supply. So I, I have a little higher faith that you'd be able to squish in a full-size card in here. It sort of sucks that I don't have a full-size card on hand, but you can't buy a graphics card anywhere right now. So uh, there's no point in dwelling on that. So the next question would be whether you could neaten this up by passing the uh, power cables behind the motherboard uh, panel at all. Um, the ATX power cable is no longer than what came with the Corsair uh, SF450, so I'm going to know right away that that won't be possible. Uh, the power cable, I think you probably could pass underneath, which is what we had done with the Corsair SF450. Um, 
but uh, I would also be interested to see how well this is going to mount on the front panel here, uh, which might leave a little more room for cable management, same as before. So let's move this to the front panel and see how that looks. All right, so as I pointed out earlier, uh, this is gonna be in the lower position on the front panel of the Cooler Master NR200. There is no SFX L mounting position on the front panel of this case. I wish there was, I think this would be a great mounting option here. Um, so you won't be able to fit a full size card with the SFX L power supply on the front panel of the Cooler Master NR200. It's just gonna be too, too close to get the cables around down here. Uh, the the modular cables themselves are going to touch the card, so it just wouldn't be possible. However, if you're looking for a mid-length card, uh, this might actually give you a little more room uh, than some of the other options by just getting the cables out of the way here for an extra three, three inches or so in depth beyond this ITX card. I wish I had a longer card here to test with, but unfortunately you can't buy a GPU, any reasonably priced GPU on the market right now due to uh, market conditions and whatnot. So I'm not gonna have one to test with for a little while. So cable management is definitely challenging in a small form factor build. And if you really wanna clean up this cable management mess, I think you're gonna have to look for custom length uh, cables. Um, there, the, I could not reach the ATX cable, even on this fairly optimal edge of this side of the, the motherboard power connector to go around the motherboard panel uh, mounting panel and to the bottom of the power supply. So to do that, you're gonna need an extra couple of inches on that, that cable. Um, and then this B550 Phantom Gaming ITX has the CPU power connection. The EPS is quite far up into the, the left here. And so that did make it challenging. Again, if you wanted to wrap that cable around the back of the motherboard and up to the power supply, I would need a custom length uh, cable for that. Maybe possible on some motherboards if this happened to be in a more uh, in, in a closer position, but ITX definitely moves things around a little bit to cram everything on the board. So you might have no choice uh, except for custom cables if you really wanna clean up the cable management in your case. All right, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit of a random vloggy kind of video. I just figured, well, I've got a couple of power supplies on hand, SFX and SFXL. I should at least show you exactly how they look in the NR200 case so that you have an idea when you are choosing the power supply for your next build, how it might fit in your case. If you need to use, or if you want to use a radiator on your case, you're gonna to need to mount the power supply on that back panel. And uh, it may be a tight fit with a full-size graphics card. Custom cables may help, but um, hopefully you got all the information you need. All right, hey, if you like this video, then leave it a like down below. And if you like the videos that I'm putting out on this channel, consider subscribing. It does help me out quite a bit. That's gonna be it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.